Well, I am back with Ron at Blooming Junction, and today we're going to be talking about agaves. And Ron, you have a great selection of, of ones that you pulled here. To the, so let's just jump right in and talk about every one of them. Okay. Well, um, the first and probably one of my favorite, probably because it's so easy to handle, I call this my friendly one. This is, <laughs> this is the calamar um, because it gives the appearance of an octopus. Um, this is a great one. Obviously, it sends up little pups here and there, and um, you know you could actually divide the plant if you want, sure, or just sure. let it grow into a nice big mound. But this is a great plant here. Um, gets about uh, two feet tall by two feet wide, and a lot of these actually have some some good size to them, don't they? That's right. Um, and this one here, the frosty blue. Um, is on the other end of the spectrum. It gets six to eight feet tall. Oh, come on, that, that's massive. It is massive. That little guy will, and, and they grow very quickly, very quickly. Even in our area here, they'll grow quickly. Yep, these are all zone seven, zone eight. Wow. This one looks much more gentle than it actually is because it hurts a lot. <laughs> it is, this is a striata, and this one in, that will get you every time. All my customers insist on touching it, even though I warn well, them. Well, it's and... deceptive. It looks like it would feel really gentle and soft, right. and it's not at all. Right. And this is a um, this is a great one too. It stays low, 18 inches, but it gets nice and and fat, about 36 inches. Wow. Wow. And this is I love the shape of this. That's the uh, Okahui. So that that doesn't sound like Latin. That sounds more like Hawaii, it does. doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Um, and that's a that's a nice one too. That one gets about two to three feet tall and it's wide. And it looks like to me it would be kind of a spreader. Yeah, it gets a nice a nice uniform mound on it though. Nice. And what's right in front of it? I love that like almost fringy sides to it. And that one's a black widow, and that one is um, another one that's on the shorter side. It gets about a foot tall, about eighteen inches wide. And I love that, I don't know if Jeff can see this when I tip it over, but I love that on the underside of the leaves there's that pattern from the from the growth that happens. It's It looks kind of black widowy yeah, to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. And this is, I love the color of this. Yeah, that one there is the, uh, the silver agave, and that one's gonna be another one that stays about 18 inches tall. And It'll then, get nice and wide. And this one here, this is my absolute favorite. This one here is, um, this particular one is shark skin. Ah, uh, yes. And it's just got just beautiful color to it. Um, in the evening, it takes on a nice glow um, around the edges. It's, it grows about three feet tall by about three feet wide. And again, it's got some pups here too. Now, speaking of that, I heard you mention that earlier. So I'll show the camera here on this one too. What, what should you do? If anything, if this starts happening with agave, you know, I wouldn't do anything to it. I would just let it grow naturally, like it would, you know. Yeah, in nature. In nature, right. And then that begs the question: What do we need to do to really, you know, give the best opportunity for these to thrive in the Northwest? Well, absolutely, um, drainage is probably the most important thing. Um, the cold, um, they'll accept the cold. What they won't accept is a lot of wet. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that you plant them a little bit higher than you would a normal plant. You don't want to plant them in any kind of a valley. Oh, you don't want drainage into the, the root ball there. Okay. Correct. Because if water collects around it, then they'll rot out. Um, I always recommend that you plant it kind of on the top of a mound sure. or the side of the mound where the water will drain off. Now, you know, our producer of the show, they actually have a couple that aren't really all that hardy, but they keep them in the pots every couple of years, they'll bit it, and they just drop that in the ground. Is yeah. that something to do too with these even? You can, yeah. So how, how does one get weeds out of these plants without, you know, ending up a bloody mess? <laughs> well, some of them are easier than others, like the calamar, the, sure. my friendly one here. You could just pull the weeds around it. Something like the striata, I would probably use some kind of long tweezers, but if you're going to have them in the garden, I would suggest planting them and then applying a pre-emergent around them so you don't have to get your fingers in there. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. And then one, it also begs the question of maintenance because in nature, they might actually do this as they get older and the leaves fade out. But in our gardens, we don't really want that. Yeah, I mean, um, something like this here, it's an old leaf. It's, a, it's eventually going to shrivel up and just go away. Uh -huh. But, you know, if you have uh, a little bit of dye back from the tip, you could just take your printers and cut it right off. Oh, wow. Okay. I would probably cut it a little further bit. down. Yeah, yeah. But 
And you're also oh, basically just do some careful cleaning up as right. they go and they'll right. be fine. Now, you know, one of the things I loved out here, Ron, is you have a wonderful dry garden that you That's planted. Right. In fact, we were here before and, and filmed with you on that. And you have a lot of these in that space, don't you? We do. We do. Um, I believe we have all of these out there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you can really, if, you, if you've never been out to Blooming Junction, it's a, it's a really cool new nursery for us. And you can come out and stroll through this garden. It's a big dry garden and see all kinds of plants besides the agave that work. And really, without water in the summer. That's right. So, and that's, that's right. something that these would love, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. So, for more information, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to the Blooming Junction website. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. A fun time, Ron.